today we continue our investigation of the heat equation in one dimension. We will also mention more remarks about Fourier series. Last time we considered the heat equation UTT minus K UXX equals zero. This was an equation for the function u of x and t in the region of the xt plane where t was greater than 0 and x was between 0 and l. And we were looking for the solution of this equation satisfying boundary conditions. So this region on the plane can be depicted like this. Here is our xt plane. This region has a boundary at x equals 0 and x equals L and also another boundary at t equals 0. We considered the problem of finding such function u satisfying the following boundary condition that at x equals 0 the function u of 0 t was 0 as well as at x equals l. So here u of l and t was supposed to be 0 as well as here it was supposed to be 0 so this was supposed to be for every t greater than 0 and also we wanted that this function satisfied initial condition at t equals 0 and for every x this function is equal to a given function f of x for every x between 0 and L. So here was our problem to solve this equation, the heat equation, with these boundary conditions for this function. And we were looking for a solution in here in the dashed region. Our strategy of finding solutions was to look for solutions in the form of a product of two functions. The first function only depending on x and the second function only depending on t. So we were looking for solutions of this form and looking for solutions of this form when we inserted this postulated solution to our heat equation, we obtained two ODEs for function capital T and function capital X as follows. T dot divided by KT was supposed to be equal the same as X double prime divided by X. And this can only be possible if both of these expressions are equal to constant and we name these constants negative lambda and now applying again the heat equation and our boundary conditions we were able to show this function lambda although we didn't assume much about it among all complex numbers it is actually supposed to be a non-negative real number Last time, for simplicity, I assumed that this constant is not equal to zero. So now we just examine this possibility. So suppose that lambda is equal to zero, then these equations tells us that t dot and x double prime must be equal to zero. So therefore, in particular, x 
it is very easy to integ integrate this equation that x must be a linear function of the coordinate x with coefficients a and b. That's the, sol the general solution of this equation. But now, because of our uh, boundary conditions here, the function x must satisfy boundary conditions x of 0 is equal x of l is equal 0. So when we impose these conditions, which our function must satisfy, to this function that corresponds to lambda equal 0 solution, then x of 0 is equal b, and according to this must be equal 0, and x of l is equal a times l plus b, which we know that is 0, must be 0. Since l is not equal 0, then these two conditions say that a and b must be equal to 0, and therefore the function x of x must be identically equal to 0. We excluded such functions from our solutions, so we, if we want that our function u of x of t is not equal to 0, then x of x is not equal to 0, and therefore solutions for lambda equal 0 are not interesting for us. So, an assumption about this form of a solution means that the functions constituting this solution, capital X and capital T, should satisfy these two ODEs with a constant lambda, and this constant lambda is a non-negative real number. And even more, from the boundary conditions, we are able to show that there are plenty of such num lambdas parameterized by an integer number n, and this lambda must be actually equal to pi squared n squared divided by L squared. Then we have shown that if we fix n, we have lambda n like this. And for such lambda n, the solution for the function x is of the form b uh, sine pi n divided by L x, and because this solution corresponds to a given n, we put an index n here, an index n here. Now, given lambda n, we have shown that the solution for the function t is tn, which equals some constant, call it cn, times exponents to minus k pi squared divided by n squared, l squared, t, okay? Taking all of this together, we were able to find solutions enumerated by a number, integer number n, given by un of x of t, being some coefficient bn times this sine is different bn than this one, sine n pi n divided by lx times exponent to minus k pi squared n squared by l squared times t. So looking for solutions satisfying heat equation and the green boundary conditions were in the form of a product of x times t, we are able to show that there are as many such solutions as the number of all integers. Actually, since n equals 0 corresponds to lambda equals 0, and we excluded this possibility from our solutions, and since solutions with negative n differ from solutions with positive n only by sign, we can restrict our considerations to solutions with n being natural numbers, 1, 2, 3, and so on. What we also did last time, we observed that the conditions 
this one, which is just the heat equation, and the green one, which is just boundary condition on the lateral parts of our region here, that these conditions are linear. So both the heat equation and the boundary conditions are linear in U. Therefore, if we have two solutions to these conditions, the linear combination, combination is also a solution. But we have a lot of solutions because we have as many solutions as natural numbers. So we can now take the linear combinations and define function u x of t by taking linear combinations of our solution u, solutions u n. Explicitly, it will be like this. And we argued last time that it is convenient to make this sum from n equal 1 to infinity here, although some of the coefficients here can be zero. For example, only although the sum formal is from one to infinity, these bn's can be zero beyond some given number n, right? So we argued that it is good for further applications to consider infinite sum of this solutions. Now, what we have shown last time is that this kind of expressions, when here n is finite, is a solution to the heat equation and the green boundary conditions. What is remained to be imposed is to is that this function u satisfies the boundary conditions on the t equals zero axis. This means that a function f of x, which is just u of x zero, must be equal to this these guys when we put t equal 0. But when we put t equal 0, then we get sum from n equal 1 to infinity, bn, and now sine pi times n divided by l x, and this term is equal to 1. So the problem that we had last time, and we just addressed last time, is if this can be satisfied always if we are given some function f of x. So the question is, if the following is true, suppose that I am given function f of x on the interval between 0 and L. Can I find coefficients bn such that this function looks like sum from n equal 1 to infinity of some coefficients bn that I am supposed to find times function sine of pi n divided by L x? Question. Given f of x, does there exist Bn's so that this holds? If 
we can produce these coefficients b given a function f, then this formula with these coefficients bn that we are supposed to find will be a unique solution to our problem. So how can we find these coefficients bn? Here, the following observation comes to play. Let us consider the following integrals. Integral from 0 to L of the function sine pi n divided by L x times the function sine pi m divided by l x dx, where n and m are both natural numbers. So let us consider the following integral. So there are as many integrals as n's and m's. It is elementary to calculate these integrals, and one can show very easily that this integral is equal to zero always when n is not equal to m and it is equal to l divided by 2 if n is equal to m. Okay? So that's a fact that you can check. And this fact is fundamental to our question of this if we can find these coefficients bn here given a function f of x. Why? Suppose that this formula is true, that given f of x there are these bn's such that f of x is equal to pi n divided by l x from n equal 1 to infinity. Suppose that this formula is true. So if this formula is true, let's, let's integrate this function f of x with a function sine pi m divided by l of x dx in the interval from 0 to l. So because we assume that this formula is true, so it is the same as integrating from 0 to L of this infinite series from n equal 1 to infinity of Bn sine pi n L x times sine pi m L x dx. Okay. But now if we really believe in this formula, then we can now change the order of first summing, then integrating into first integrating, then summing. So this is the same as, as sum from n equal 1 to infinity of bn times integral from 0 to L of sine pi n l x sine pi m l x dx but this integral here is precisely our integral here and we know according to the result here that this integral is only non-zero where n is equal n, where n is not equal to m, then this integral is equal to 0. So every n here that is different than m contributes with 0 value to the sum. So actually the only thing which we'll get here is when n 
is equal to m, and then there will be value of this of this of this integral, which is here, will be l half because when n is equal to m, this integral here is equal l half, and it will be only picking up b m because only when n is equal to m, this is non-zero, so there will be b m here. So if we now look at the right hand side of this and the left hand side of this, then we will get that b m is equal to over l times integral from 0 to L f of x sine pi m L x dx. Okay? So what I have just proven is the following, that if such a formula for f of x exists, then these coefficients bn are given by this integral. And therefore, the solution to our problem of heat equation with boundary conditions is given by the function u of x of t being sum from n equal 1 to infinity bn sine pi n l x exponents minus k pi squared n squared l squared t where bn coefficients are given by integral from 0 to l of the initial value function f times so if this series is convergent in some sense, then we not only found a solution, but we have shown that this solution is unique because it is given by the formula and here is how this coefficient pn are defined in terms of the initial value function f. Let us consider an example. Consider the heat equation with the initial boundary conditions of the form and u of x at zero being f of x and this function is given by x where x is greater than 0 and smaller than pi half and pi minus x when x is greater than pi half and smaller than equal pi okay so let us consider heat equation with this boundary value and initial conditions right so when compared to our original problem here we have k equal to 1, l equal to pi, and this function f of x has explicit form given here. We can even plot it for x, how this f of x looks like. So it starts at 0 and it ends at pi. Here is pi half. And from 0 to pi half, it grows linearly as uh, f of x equal to x. So it goes from it grows from 0 to pi half, and it has value pi half here. And then from 
pi half to pi, it again is going linearly, is, but now it, it has negative slope. So it is, the function looks like this. This function, it has its maximum in pi half. And in this, note that in this pi half, this function is not differential. It's continuous, but not differential, right? So that's our problem. And believing in this, what we did, we have a solution like this one given here. So the solution that we want to investigate is just of the form u of xt equals sum from n equal 1 to infinity bn and now sine perhaps it's better to write m here l is equal to pi so pi divided by l is 1 so there will be m here times x times exponent of minus k but k is equal to 1 and then we pi squared by L squared, which is again 1, so it will be n squ m squared here, t. So that's what we just copied. Whereas these coefficients bm are equal to 2 over L, which is pi, times integral from 0 to pi of our function f of x sine m x dx right so i did nothing but use this what we already established in the general case of general k and general function f of x but here we have this f of x given explicitly so we can now try to evaluate what are these bms so this will be just 2 divided by pi now, the integral from 0 to pi should be split into integral from 0 to pi half and then from pi half to 0. So this is from 0 to pi half of function f of x, which on this interval is equal to x. Plus integral from pi half to pi from function f of x, which now is equal pi minus x sine mx dx, right? So we want now to calculate these integrals. So we now recall an elementary fact that the indefinite integral of x sine mx dx is equal to minus 1 over m x cosine m x plus 1 over m squared sine m x plus constant. And we will have such integral here and also in here. And eventually we will have integral of sine m x. So if we just employ all of these integrals and this information from here, we'll get that we have here 2 over pi, and this entire thing is eventually equal to 2 over m squared sine m pi divided by 2. Okay? So these coefficients bm are equal to 4 pi divided by m squared sine m pi divided by 2. So now, since all these calculations were extremely long, let us recall what we did. So we were looking for a solution to the heat equation satisfying the following boundary conditions and initial conditions. And as a solution, we postulate, and this will be a solution provided that the function f of x 
which is here, can be decomposed onto a sum from m equal 1 to infinity of bm times sine mx. And when we just assumed that such a representation of function f of x exists, then we were able to show that these coefficients bm look like 4 divided by pi m squared times sine m pi by 2 where m runs from 1, 2, 3 through all natural number to infinity, right? But now let us concentrate on the values of this sine. So sine, let us figure out what are the values of this sine for various m's, right? So the first observation is that, that if m is even, namely if m is of the form 2 times n, where n runs from 1 to 3 and so on, then you will have that this thing is equal sine of m, which is now 2n pi divided by 2, so it is sine of n pi, and is simply 0 for whatever n we choose. On the other hand, if m is odd, namely if m is equal to n minus 1, where n goes from 1 to 3, blah, 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 then we see that sine on of m pi is just 2n minus 1 pi by half, which is just equal to sine of n pi minus pi half, and this is the same as sine n pi, which is always 0 times cosine pi half minus cosine on n pi of n pi times sine of pi half, and sine of pi half is equal to 1. And now, so this is equal to minus cosine of n pi, but the cosine of n pi is either plus or minus 1, and when n is equal 1, it is minus 1, so this thing is minus 1 to the power n, which is the same as minus 1 to the power n plus 1. So the conclusion is that these coefficients bm are equal to 4 divided by pi m square times 0 when m is equal to n, or it is minus 1 to the power n plus 1 if m is equal to n minus 1. And n runs from 1 to 3, blah, blah, blah. So now if we go back to our expression for u x of t, you'll get that u x of t is a sum from m equal 1 to infinity. But there will be two kinds of sums. Either this m runs through even numbers, or this m runs through odd numbers. If m runs through the even numbers, the coefficients bm are 0, so they don't contribute to this sum. So the only m's that contribute to the sum is when m are odd, so the sum will be through m odd, which are of the form 2n minus 1, where n runs from 1, 2 to infinity, of coefficients bm for m being of this form. So the coefficients of m, of uh, coefficients bm for m being of this form is just 4, times pi, and now m squared, which is 2n minus 1 squared. And now there is this 
minus 1 to the power n plus 1, right? And then there is sine of m, but m is of the form 2n minus 1 x exponent to minus m squared, right? So if we just skip this information that m's, m goes through odd numbers, we can rewrite it as u of x of t is equal to 4 divided by pi sum from n equal 1 to infinity minus 1 to the power n plus 1 divided by 2 n minus 1 squared times sine of 2n minus 1 x e to the minus 2n minus 1 squared times t. So with everything what we just employed now, we see that the solution that we are searching for should have this form. Okay. As a byproduct, we also get this formula, which says that the function f of x, which is a function given by x, where x is from 0 to pi half, and pi minus x, where x is from pi half to pi, that this function is equal sum over m, which is, again, because for m odd, the m's are zero, so there will be sine of n from one to infinity, only of these coefficients like here. So there will be four divided by pi, two n minus one squared times minus one, to the power n plus one sine of 2n minus 1x. So as a byproduct of all of our investigation, we also found an interesting representation of this kind of function as this infinite series, right? So that's the first thing. Now, everything what I said so far indicates that the expression given by this formula with this right hand side is a solution of our heat equation and the boundary and initial value values given here. But if you look at the right hand side of this formula here, it looks rather scary. Okay, it looks interesting but can you guarantee that this series that we have here on the right hand side converges so you can ask does this series converge in any reasonable sense and how can you deal with such question so here an information from I believe calculus free comes and this information is given by something which is called Weierstrass M test. Weierstrass M test says the following. Suppose that number one, we have a sequence of continuous functions variables x and t that are confined to some set a on the xt plane. So these guys are continuous in the set a. So suppose that we have such sequence from n equal 1 to infinity. And suppose also that we have a sequence of numbers fn 
it is a sequence of numbers such that number one if we take modulus of these functions un of xt then for every value of x and t from our set a it is always smaller than the value of the corresponding number from the sequence fn. And moreover, suppose that the sequence fn is such that the series made of this fn is convergent. Then, Weierstrass M test says the function. un of xt sum from n equal 1 to n converges when n goes to infinity to a function u like x of t which is continuous in a okay so in other words if we have a sequence of continuous functions over some set A, and if the sequence of continuous functions is always majorized by a number sequence Fn for all values of x and t from our region A, and moreover, if this sequence Fn gives rise to a series that is co convergent, then the series made out of these functions u n of x of t also converges absolutely and uniformly to a continuous function on the set A. So it is converges absolutely and uniformly in A to a continuous function, okay? So why it helps to our question if the right-hand side of these solutions that we just arrived converges to something interesting? Let us write this solution as u of x of t equals sum from n equal 1 to infinity of functions u n of x of t, where u n of x of t, we can read from there, is just 4 divided by pi minus 1 to the power n plus 1 divided by 2n minus 1 squared times sine 2n minus 1 x exponents to minus 2n minus 1 squared t okay so our solution that we arrived at is given in terms of infinite series obtained in terms of a sequence of functions u n of x t given like this. So let's try to apply Weierstrass test to this series with this u n. So we have a sequence. So if we want to apply Weierstrass test, you will have to, we will need to have this sequence u n of x of t like here. And we have such sequence. Okay, so there is a sequence like this. And now Weierstrass test says, okay, take this un and look at its modulus for all the values x of t that are given to you. So then we, if we look, if we take modulus of this thing, then we will have 4 divided by pi. Modulus of minus 1 is 1. And here, modulus of 2n minus 1 squared is 2n minus 1 squared. So we will have this. 
And now there will be modulus of sine 2n minus 1x times modulus of e to 2n minus 1 squared t, right? But now, t is always greater than 0 in our set, so this thing is always smaller than 1. And sine is always between minus 1 and 1, so therefore its modulus will be between it will be smaller than equal 1. So this thing that we have here in this modulus is always smaller or equal 1. So this thing which stays here is smaller than equal or 4 divided by pi 2n minus 1 squared, right? So now, so this is our candidate for Fn from the Weierstrass test. So now we have to see if the sum from n equal 1 to infinity of Fn converges. But this is the, this is the series from n equal 1 to infinity or 4 pi, which is some constant, doesn't matter. And here is 1 over 2n minus 1 squared. But this series for very big n behaves like a constant times a series like 1 over uh, n squared, right? But we know that such series is convergent. So this converges. Converges. So by, by Weierstrass test, this series converges uniformly and absolutely to a continuous function function in the region that we were considering, namely in the region where x is from 0 pi and t greater than 0. So in this region, this infinite sum, which is this infinite sum, by Weierstrass test converges to a continuous function u of x of t. So at least we are able to prove by using Weierstrass test that the function u of x of t being sum from n equal 1 to infinity 4 divided by pi minus 1 n plus 1 by 2n minus 1 squared sine 2n minus 1 x exponents 2n minus 1 squared t, we were able to prove that this function is continuous, is continuous in the region x between 0 and pi and t greater than 0. So now the question is if this function which is just u of x of t being sum from n equal 1 to infinity of u n of x of t, if this function is differentiable so is this differentiable with respect to t and twice differentiable with respect to x because we want to check if this function that we already know that is continuous satisfies really the equation like our heat equation. So we want to check if this really satisfies the heat equation. So we have to, to, to check it, we have to guarantee that this thing, which is this thing, is differentiable with respect to t and twice differentiable with respect to x and eventually if it satisfies this equation. So the first thing is how to define u of 
u sub t of our x of t. So it is just d over dt of this entire series. It's better to write it as u u t u sub t is just d over dt from sum from n equal 1 to infinity of our u and x of t. So if we don't know what to do, we simply just say that it is simply this d over dt of u n of x of t. And now if we just calculate this thing using the definition of what is our u n, then we get sum from n equal 1 to infinity of some function again. And now we again apply Weierstrass M test to show that this thing really converges to a continuous function. So this thing really converges to a continuous function. And similarly, we just show that if we take this thing, which is we define this to be simply that and again using Weierstrass te test we are, we, one can show that this series converges to a continuous function u of xx and now so somehow this thing and this thing is well defined in terms of this series by means of Weierstrass test. So therefore, now we want to check what is this, and this is d over dt of our sum from n equal 1 to infinity un minus second differentiation with respect to x of sum from n equal 1 to infinity of un. But now we know that we can just write it as sum from n equal 1 to infinity of d over dt un minus d over d squared un. But on uns, we have checked that this is just 0. So this is 0. So this thing is really a solution of the heat equation. Okay. So this is how one proves that this, at the beginning, very formal solution given by means of this infinite series actually is a justified continuous and actually twice differentiable in x and once differentiable in t function and that this function satisfies the heat equation. And one can see immediately that it satisfies uh, boundary conditions because at zero, when, 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 when x is equal zero, sine is equal zero, so this, all, all these terms are zero, so it satisfies condition u of zero t is equal zero, it satisfies condition u of p pi of t is equal zero, and the initial value condition is satisfied because of our curious an interesting expression for function f of x. Okay, so it is how one can solve explicitly to the very end the boundary initial value problem for the heat equation. As the last thing, which is sort of nice, I wanted to show you the following. So a byproduct of all of this boundary value problem for this heat equation, a byproduct, was that we get a representation of function f of x, which was equal to x when x was between 0 and pi half, and pi minus x for x greater than pi half and smaller than pi. And we get this 
presentation of this of this of this function in terms of something which should be called Fourier series, and this presentation was that it is it was equal to sum four divided by pi sum from n equal one to infinity minus one to the power n plus one divided by two n minus one squared. And here was sine 2n minus 1x. So we have, as a byproduct of everything what we did, we found uh, the composition of this function, which looks like this on the interval from 0 to pi. We, we get the, the composition of this function, so this is our function f of x into a sum of essentially sinuses with some particular coefficients, right? So for what this kind of formula can be used, this kind of formula was used to find solution to our boundary value and initial value problem. But in particular, we can now use this formula to the following. So let us calculate what is f of pi half for this function. So we know that f of pi half is equal to pi half. So by definition of the function, which is just given in here, it is pi half. But on the other hand, it is given by this Fourier series. So let's calculate this. So it is 4 divided by pi. And here is sum from n equal 1 to infinity from minus 1 to the power n plus 1 to n minus 1 squared. And now there is sine of 2n minus 1 pi half. We already calculated this, and this is equal to minus 1 to the power n plus 1. So if we just insert all of this into this thing, we will get that it is equal to 4 divided by pi to sum from n equal 1 to infinity. And now this minus 1 to the power n plus 1 times this minus 1 to the power n plus 1 gives you minus 1 to n plus 1 to the power 2, so it means plus 1, so there is 1 here, and here is 2n minus 1 squared, right? Ha! So we get something like this, that pi half is equal to this. So multiplying both sides of this equality by pi divided by 4, we get the following thing, that the right hand side which will be just sum from n equal 1 to infinity of 1 over 2n minus 1 squared that the value of this series is precisely equal to pi squared divided by 8. So somehow I have shown how to use Fourier series of some strange functions to obtain results on convergence and actually on calculating the precise value of the infinite series. So in particular, this infinite series, so the series like start from n equal 1, so it is 1 over 1 squared, plus then when n is equal 2, so it is 1 over 3 squared, plus 1 over 5 squared, plus 1 over... 2n minus 1 squared up to infinity that is equal precisely to pi squared divided by 8. It's quite an impressive result and we get it for free by just using the formula that we get as a byproduct of our boundary initial value problem for our heat equation.